Welcome everybody. Been saying I was going to do this for a while now, and I'm finally getting around to it. The DIY bobbin for holding your fly tying thread is here. Next, to grab my tap and die set and match the die with the corresponding gauge thickness of the rod that I'm using. It's usually easier if you're using a non-ferrous material like brass or bronze, copper or aluminum. So after I have threaded my rod, I need to find a nut that will fit that thread size. And I've got one here, a little wing nut that will be easy to adjust the tension with this bobbin. So now I'm going to make a measurement to see where I'm going to put the 90 degree bend in my threaded rod to accommodate the spool that I'm using. And I've got some coated wire here and just want to make a little mark on that rod so that I know where to start making that bend. So I'm just gripping the threaded rod just above where the mark is and then I'm going to bend with my hand upwards at 90 degrees to make that that bend. That did not go so well. As soon as I went to make the bend, the 90 degree there, it snapped the rod. You can try to anneal it first and that might help to relax the metal, uh, taking it up to temperature and uh, relaxing those molecules just to make that bend. But I have a torch around and didn't think to do that, but ended up having to use it anyway to go in and braise those two ends of my threaded rod together. And while I was over there, I went ahead and just took the next gauge thickness size up of that rod uh, and braised it to the head, the flat head of a bolt, as you can see here. So what we're going to do next, if you can make it out with my rough sketch here, is to make the bend in the top part so that the tubing uh, can be accommodated up here that's going to deliver the thread to your ties. So, so I'm going to put the spools on and then take a measurement here and see where the bend needs to start on each of these uh, just so I have an idea whenever I take them off. And hopefully this is annealed enough now so that when I go to make this bend uh, after uh, the first attempt that it will bend and not break on me. Alright, that went much smoother this time. Much easier to bend since the rod was heated up and annealed after I made that bra braise at the original 90 degrees. So I'm going to try to do the same thing with the larger one now. So the goal with both of these was to make this secondary bend up here at the top be central with where the spool is going to be once the wing nut is attached. So what I'm going to do, I've marked this here, I'm going to cut it off and then I'm going to forge both of the ends flat with a hammer to make a little landing spot for that piece of copper tubing to go on to the end there.
need to make them a little bit flat so that a the the material is work hardened now so it won't be bendy but also I want to make those flat spots so that the tubing can be soldered onto the end there so to cut the tubing for the end of the bobbin here to length I just have a little jig that I have set up that I can put my little jeweler saw blade right in that slot and I can cut the exact length that I need and what the saw allows me to do in this case is to cut a flat piece of that tubing off if you go in with snips then you just collapse the tubing and it's then really difficult to make it nice and smooth for the thread to be able to pass through so I just work that little piece off and there I have my my piece of tubing to, to start shaping alright for the tubing that's going up on this top part of the bobbin I've got some 2.32 millimeter or 0.091 inches copper tubing and before I go to solder this on there I am going to flare the ends out beginning with my awl here and what I do is just put this in the end and begin to flare that out and my awl has been sharpened to a tip if I can get it to focus there uh, to just be able to flare or begin to flare that copper tubing out so once I have begun to flare that I'll go back in with uh, the smallest size of dapping punch we can see this you can see the little sphere on there you can buy these kits uh, at Harbor Freight this is the smallest size of those and what it's going to do is just help to continue that flare in the end so that we can get more of this appearance there we go Oops. Uh, and it will also because of this polished sphere here on the end it's going to smooth out the inside of that so what I'll start to do to get a little bit more flare is take my awl set it on the bench block here and then take a small hammer and do some light taps trying not to keep it um, on straight and begin to try and flare that end out so I'll just give it a couple more taps here with the awl and then I'm going to switch over to my dapping punch and I'm going to continue to flare out that opening so a little trick to get the hang of because you are trying to hold the dapping punch and the tubing itself straight but this is what you end up with if you can do it successfully is that end being flared so I'm going to do it to the other side just try to hold the tubing as straight as you can brace it with fingers and then give it a few taps and this time it bent the tubing just a little bit but that's okay we can straighten that out Uh, just to clean up that edge a little bit that has uh, gotten a little bit sharp around the top lip I'm going to go back in with some sandpaper and just fold it over that end of the tubing and spin it you move it up and down a little bit too but that will just take the sharpness off of the lip there it's not as important on the end that you're going to make uh, point towards the, the spool itself uh, but 
you know, certain angles that you're holding the bobbin at, you don't want this edge to cut your thread off or abrade it and weaken it. So after we've sanded those edges off, like in that, we can get ready to solder this onto the bobbin. So I've got both of the pieces of tubing positioned. Uh, I've got my torch ready to go. And I'm going to turn the fan on because I'm using paste solder and you don't want to be inhaling that. Uh, so I'm going to turn the exhaust fan on. The advantage of the paste solder is that it has the flux and the solder all in the same substance. So I want to use the flame to heat the biggest part, the thickest, most massive part of metal first. Because that's what's going to take the longest to heat up. So I'm concentrating over here, and then I will start to move onto my other piece just to make sure it's getting heated up. Because this copper tubing at the end is going to get hot very quickly, and I don't want it to, to burn up on me. So I'm uh, going to heat both of these pieces equally and try to get them soldered around the same time see how successful I am at doing that but with this paste solder you're looking for it to bubble and boil and then not even look like it's catching flame right like right now and you know that it's getting ready at this point to flow so I'll turn my torch flame up just a little bit and start to really focus my heat on the end there and when I see it silver over and get hot enough, it's doing now. I think we've got a successful solder, and I'm going to move over to the other one. So, see, it's catching fire. Once that flame goes out, we're going to be a lot closer to getting this piece to flow, also. And once we get it up to red and see the silver flowing underneath there, you know that we've done it. So, see the other side and make sure we really flowed there. But now both of them should be secure and we can put them into the pickle. So, this bath that I call pickle is sodium bisulfate. And what it's going to do is take all of that nasty fire scale off of the surfaces and make it a lot easier to clean. So we're going to let the pieces stay in there for a few minutes now. Let's see what we got. I did leave these in overnight just to give them a really good pickling. And I'm just going to wash these off now. Get all that residue of the sodium bisulfate off of there. So this is what we're looking like uh, after just cleaning off in water. Had a little steel brush just to get some of the larger pieces of gunk out. But now uh, I'm going to give them a little hit on the buffing wheel just to take them up to a higher polish. <laughs> So now all that's left is to add the spools of thread. I really like that shine that I got uh, on the brass. This one is perfect. I can just throw the wing nut on there because of that larger gauge of 
bolt that I used to be able to put this on, but it looks like this smaller spool with the metal wire, I'm going to have to put some spacers so that I can make it not just wobble around on this um, pin here. So. so to solve this issue with my other models, I just took a, um, it's a drywall anchor and similar to this one, uh, I just cut the end off of it and then that gives you a nice little bushing to stick down in there and make sure your spool does not wobble around on your bobbin. So for this case, uh, the, the drywall anchors, the largest ones I had, actually still go through there. So what I've done is place a washer on that and then that is going to give me the clearance I need to make a, a nice little bushing there for my bobbin. And I need to go in and just cut this off real quick to length. So for this, I'll go back to using my little little jig here. And I can just cut right through that. So do it real quick for the other one. And we're just about good to go. So I actually had to go in and put another just little piece of vinyl tubing around the axle of the bobbin so that it gave it a little bit more bushing inside of the drywall anchor there. But it's nearly perfect now. It feels like it has a really smooth action. So I'm going to go ahead and put the wing nut on and tension those up and thread them. Well, there you have it, folks, my arsenal of DIY fly tying bobbins. I love how these turned out, and they're going to last for years. I especially love the little one. Um, it's awesome having the wing nuts on there for tension, so I can control that while I'm tying. And if you have any questions about tools that I used or materials or anything that I didn't make clear in the video, don't hesitate to shoot me over a message. I'll definitely respond to you. And like and subscribe if you enjoyed this build. The only thing to do now is get the fly tying vise out, tie some flies, and go catch some fish. So I will catch you all on the next one.